in on this, just let it naturally find its place. So what happens is this slides up easily, but it doesn't come down, okay? So when this part here is above okay, the center here, it'll allow this to slide down. And if it's below the center, it won't, okay? So when you go up to the top of the ladder, you have to take it, you have to detach yourself from the steel rope. So normally what I do is I just get people to have a little go to, to, to put it onto the rope here, to climb up a few steps and come back down again and take it off. Yeah, so the red piece is always lies against the rope. Yeah, okay, that's fine now. If you just let it naturally find the rope itself, okay, then head on up there for a couple of steps. Just to give you a feel for how that works. Yeah, and then you can come back down again. And now, sometimes it's a little tricky to take it off, but just to see how you get on there. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, you got how you have it. Yeah. Okay, so we have a transformer in the base of, of the turbine, just under this floor here. And this, these are the power cables that are coming down from the generator. And these are coming down at 690 volts. Then from 690 volts, it's stepped up to 10 kilovolts, which is the network voltage for Dundalk, okay? And then there's an underground cable that runs underground over to the electrical compound where the main college circuit breakers and meter is, and the turbine is connected to our side of the meter. So we're offsetting the purchases of retail electricity from the grid mostly. And if the turbine is producing too much for the college, then the excess is exported. If, it's, if the turbine is not producing enough for the college, the college will consume everything the turbine is producing and the deficit is imported. And sometimes the, on a second by second basis, the turbine will exactly match the college. Uh, the turbine is an 850 kilowatt rated machine, uh, 60 meter tower, 52 meter rotor diameter, manufactured in Denmark. Uh, produces about between one and a half to 1.8 million units a year, has a capacity factor on average of about 23%, and uh, it costs 1.127 million euro. Here is the 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 upper the, contr the controller that the that the people on the ground would use. So now we can see here that our wind speeds are very low, and normally any large every wind turbine has a power curve, and, and generally a turbine starts to produce. Uh, energy above three meters per second as determined by its power curve. So we see now our winds here are very low, they're below three meters per second. So the turbine is not actually producing any power at all. And uh, the rotor is just idling around our 17 RPM. If the winds went above three meters per second, then the, con the controller would know that there's significant energy to be gained from the wind, so it would engage the generator. And here we have the, the pitch of the blades, we have our wind speed measurements, we have our rotor or revolutions per minute value. Then that goes through a gearbox, which steps it up, this is a ratio of about 62 to one, which steps it up to the generator speed here, which is over a thousand RPM at this point here. And at the moment, because we're not producing any electricity, yet we've lights on in the turbine and we have the control system upstairs, they, con they consume a small amount of energy here represented by this negative power here. The main power cables come down through here. They go to the transformer down on, under the floor here. And at this point, I'm going to pause the turbine. So if you want to have a look at the blades pitching outside, that might be interesting for you. much shut down so it's totally safe to be up there okay so I think we're ready to hit the road and head up so the tower height is 60 meters it's divided into three sections of 20 meters the top of the tower here here is a shock sensor if there's a, a vibration in the in the turbine in high winds and there's a pendulum here, and if this shakes a lot, moves a lot, then it'll put the turbine into pause mode until the vibration has gone away. Uh, these are the main power cables coming down here from the generator. These were the cables we saw at the bottom of the tower. And this is a big isolator here, a big isolator switch here. So if you were, were taking off these cables for repair or anything, you would you'd turn this big isolator switch here and you disconnect it from the generator. 
or even if you're removing the generator for some reason, replacing the generator, this is just a, a place where you can disconnect the cables. And we're going to head up into the, up into the ma main cell. When I'm standing beside the generator here, the back of the turbine is in this direction, the rotor is in this direction, the gearbox is directly over the head of the camera at the moment, this is the gearbox here, and this is all the power control here, so all the power electronics are all, all contained in these cabinets here. The turbine can yaw 360 degrees, it can face the wind in all directions. If the turbine yaws in the same direction three and a half revolutions, it will go into pause mode and untwist itself. The wind sometimes can cause yaw to go this direction or go the opposite direction, so it, it's very seldom untwisting throughout the year, maybe two or three times a year it might untwist itself. Here we have the crane that if, when we open the back door we can let down the crane to bring up boxes of tools and uh, normally if we open the back door then there are harness points here that you have to connect your lanyard to. So I'll just demonstrate the lanyard being connected there. So back door is open, I have to connect my lanyard to this point here so I won't fall out the back of here. All here is the power electronics, all of the control of the turbine is here. On this side here, we have our generator. It's the main generator here. And these are the power cables that we saw going down the ladder. They originate here, the stator and the generator. Then the generator itself is air-cooled. So that's some air cooling going. This is kind of an, an extraction fan here that keeps the generator cool. So down, down here now we're looking, uh, well generally that big blue box in front of us is the gearbox and then that uh, pipe that appears to be sticking out of the gearbox is actually a hydraulic ram and that's the pitch control ram. So that's controlling the pitch of the blades. So that pitch ram extends all the way through the gearbox all the way out into the hub. And then to the right of the, the pitch ram we see the, the composite coupling here. It's, it's actually underneath that that's a metal cover, that silver uh, cover, but it's essentially where the generator is connected to the gearbox, and that's the high-speed shaft of the gearbox. So when we saw the controller downstairs, we were looking at something like over 1,000 RPM. So the shaft at this point here would be operating anywhere above 1,000 RPM up to 1,600 RPM. So earlier on, we saw the yaw bearing uh, downstairs. What causes the, the, the system to yaw? Well, we have a yaw motor here and a yaw gearing here. So this is a motor that, that drives the yaw gear and similarly there's another motor on the other side of the yaw bearing over there. This is a relatively low powered motor. It's about two kilowatts of power and it has a, a planetary gearbox uh, system in there which essentially allows it to have the very high torque required to yaw the turbine around. So this is the main gearbox here. This is generally in some of the older turbines. The gearbox has been one of the first major components uh, to, to break down. And the gearbox is uh, suspended here on these um, suspension rods here that are kind of uh, springy. And uh, so the gearbox is in suspension on those suspension rods there. And that just gives an example of what that looks like. This is the main shaft housing here. So now we're on the low speed side of the gearbox. So underneath this cover here we have the main shaft and the main shaft bearing is here and then we go out through this hatch here and this is the hub out here. So the blades are connected to the hub outside and it, you can actually open this and go out into the hub if you want to, if you want to do, do any servicing on the hub. The pitching of the system is, is controlled hydraulically and this is the hydraulic station over here. The hydraulic uh, pump and motors, you can see accumulators there. And this hydraulic station is controlling that large uh, hydraulic ram that we saw earlier, which is controlling the pitch of the blades. The two uh, work out in the hub, for example, it's compulsory that we lock the rotor. And these are the, the rotor locks here. So I would essentially rotate this thing here and connect it to one of these. Uh, this bolt here would be passing through one of these holes here. And there's a lock on this side and a lock on the far side. So the rotor would be physically locked. There's gearbox cooling required and there's the power system uh, is also requires cooling. So the gearbox is oil cooled, so these pipes along here for example, this is hydraulic oil being uh, fed up here to an oil cooling system, 
for is the power electronics is a water cooled or a glycol cooled system. And this is the glycol tank here. And if you follow those pipes around, they go all the way back to the power electronics down here, and that keeps the power electronics cool. So in summary, then, we have our rotor. We have our shaft, low-speed shaft, between 16 to 29 RPM, up to maybe 30 RPM. Then we have our gearbox here. Then behind the gearbox, that steps it up to uh, a multiple of about 62, up to our generator down there, which is spinning anywhere between 1,000 and 1,600 RPM, and the electricity is generated there. And then we have all the power uh, electronics and control system all on the right-hand side as you look down towards the back of the turbine, and the crane is down at the back with the back door. So this is a very small turbine, actually. This is the smallest of the big ones, you know. Yeah, this is like 850 kilowatts is only a baby turbine comparison to the seven, the Vessels V164, which is a seven megawatt turbine. We installed the turbine in 2005. The capital cost was 1.127 million. It saves the college about 120,000 euro a year. We got a grant, 40% grant at the time in 2005. Without a grant, the turbine would pay for itself in less than eight years, and with the grant, it would pay for itself in less than five years. The turbine is now six years old, so it has paid for itself. It requires two services per year. One is a large service, one is a minor service, and then there's a major five-year service. The blades generally are not the first thing to go. The blades generally have 15 to 20 year lifespan. If some if some damaging component hits the blades, you may have to replace place the blades, like for lightning, for example, if that happened. But generally, the first major component to go, or the most problematic components in large scale wind turbines to date, have been the gearbox and the generator.